Seth, we're dealing with questions about uh, physics of the observer and events, uh, the FQXI conference. We used to, uh, previous conferences we were at was on information, before that it was time, the multiverse, all these really big concepts of the fundamentals of, of existence. Uh, I want you to, with your physicist hat on, I want you to put your philosopher's hat on. I know you've had training in philosophy. And, and talk about the philosophy of physics and cosmology in terms of these big questions, time, information, multiverse, ob observations, events. How, how, do you, how do you put it all together and understand what physics and cosmology tells us? I think we should look beyond just kind of, you know, our ordinary day-to-day -day technological society. I mean, human beings, as long as there have been human beings, we've asked, you know, why are we here? What's going on? What is this whole universe thing? And you have wonderful stories of creation myths. You know, my favorite creation myths is the Norse one of the world being licked out of the rim of a salty, fiery pit by a gigantic cow. Now, now that's a good creation myth. <laughs> But if you look at what we're trying to do with science, I mean, look at cosmology. Cosmology is trying to make a scientific version of the story of creation. It's a story. It happens to be a story that is very well backed up by evidence. It's totally crazy. It says, you know, 13 billion years ago, 13.8 billion years ago, actually 13.79 billion years ago, <laughs> there was a big bang. There's like a gigantic explosion that took place everywhere. And out of this came, you know, all the elements and then stars and galaxies and eventually human beings. It's an amazing story. And it happens to be correct. I mean, unlike the giant cow, well, no, I'm not, I don't want to prejudge you against giant cows. Yeah, so I think that there's a very basic human desire to make sense of our world. And science is, is the outcome of that. It's a very special outcome, really, you know, real science of the kind that we're familiar with today it was only uh, originated in the last few hundred years. The idea that we can have, make theories that are tested by experiment, there's a systematic way of doing this. And let's be, be honest that, you know, scientific knowledge is an eensy weensy fraction of all human knowledge. Sure. You know, you look at the number of blogs on the web, you look at what's on Facebook or Snapchat, you know, and scientific knowledge, you take, you know, it's like tiny, 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 tiny bit. And a lot of science is wrong too, which is the whole point, you know, like many psychological experiments are, are not reproducible, but some of them are. And when they are reproducible, then that's something you can trust. So I think that, you know, science is in some sense a, a very special part of the human endeavor to make sense of our surroundings. So here we are, maybe a million or so years where even anything like human beings existed, um, maybe five, 6,000 years of recorded history, and how many years of real science? Uh, 300, something like that, three, 400 years of real science. And now with 300, 400 years of real science, we can understand the universe, how it happened, down to its 10 to the minus 36 or 39 second, an extreme fraction of a second, we can know this whole, whole thing. We don't know the whole story, we know this. What does that say to you that in such a short amount of time that we now as human beings understand the structure of the universe and how it began? Well, I, that says to me, it's super cool. That's why I'm a scientist. I'm even worse. I'm an engineer. I'm a professor of engineering at MIT. Yeah, it's a remarkable. And in fact, the time scale is even less because if you think of it, you know, we've had kind of what we would regard as modern science, say, since Galileo. Yeah. Okay. You know, beginning of the 1600s. And, uh, uh, but the number of scientists was very, very tiny. So, you know, if you look at the scientific endeavor, most of science has been done in the last 50 years. And it's been an amazing ride. I mean, you and I have been alive for this time, and it's incredible. And I think that, you know, it's, the next 50 years is going to be even more amazing. 